Thank you. 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 Thank so this group did correct or wrong? <laughs> Five <laughs> are correct. Sorry. What, wait. These two groups? I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Did you as a group think Novena was correct? No. no. Who thought Armando as a group was he correct? Armadillo was right. And I had some who just didn't vote. <laughs> are y'all undecided over there or what? So let's hear our discussion points. Uh, someone who said Armando, tell us why. Navina doesn't even have an X-axis. Say again, Evan? Navina doesn't even have an X-axis on there. So, okay, first off, right, the degree is actually not going to be determined where the X-axis is put. That's the whole thing is that Armando um, put an X-axis and said that she's incorrect, that it's a fifth degree by looking at roots, right? But whether it's a fourth or fifth degree can be proven without an X-axis, or if a fourth or fifth is possible. Why why do you think Armando didn't know what he was doing? I see two. You say you see two imaginary roots? Three imaginary. Well, that's what Armando says. Uh, Cole, what did we talk about in your group about why Armando may be thinking three imaginary roots? Because you said that uh, that line was like a cubic. Say that one more time for me. That line was like a cubic. Yeah, rephrase the words. Like huh? That curve. Looks that curve, weird. right? Doesn't that curve right here look a little bit like a cubic? Mm -hmm. So maybe that's where Armando is getting uh, three imaginary roots. Um, but I gotta, I gotta point this out. Y'all missed the most important thing. What have we been talking about very heavily so far today? In behavior. In behavior. Look at that. Those graphs again. Huh? Positive. <laughs> even. Oh, yeah. What? What degree? Kind of degree? Even or odd? Even. So who is incorrect? Armando. Oh. Armando has to be wrong because if it is fifth degree, the end behavior goes in opposite directions, right? Oh. Yeah, we forgot about that, right? I'm not singing a song. All right. So, really quickly, I need to point this out. I need y'all to pay attention to this. Here's the fundamental issue with Armando's argument. I get that this looks like a cubic right here. And I get why he's saying three imaginary roots. But how do we get imaginary roots? When we do what? That's a multiplicity of two, an imaginary root. So x squared may equal a negative number. So when I solve this imaginary roots always have to come in positive or negative, so in twos or pairs. You cannot have an imaginary or an odd number of roots. The imaginary roots come from taking a square root of a negative, so they always come in pairs. That's an important detail here. So you, so, can't have three. you can never have three or five or seven or nineteen imaginary roots. They have to come in pairs, so they have to be an even number of them. Does that make sense? Okay, so Armando's issue is he's looking at that and he's looking at, oh, that's a, that, that looks like a cubic, so it's three imaginary roots, but imaginary roots come in pairs. So it can never be an odd number of imaginary. So imaginary roots come in pairs. It can't be an odd number. That's the first issue. Two, just look at that end behavior. It has to be what degree? Even. Even. Guys, I want to pause and I want to point this out. And so hold on to your question for a second, Elliot. 
Didn't we just spend almost an entire hour talking about end behavior? Yes. 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 And how many of us thought about end behavior when we tackled this problem? I don't know about that. None of us. But like, if that's what we've been talking about this whole time, wouldn't it make sense? Like, this is part of the problem: is that we don't use the information we just looked at to think about and move forward. You, there's a reason why we've been talking about in behavior so much. Use it, Leah. What was your question? Um, so, if we're in behaviors, we get like Yeah, you could have three real roots, and you could have two imaginary roots. Um, and so I will point this out. Um, someone was mentioning, hey, well, if we drew the x-axis here, it would only be one root. Is that true? Be one x-intercept, but that one root would have a multiplicity of two. Right? And in this case, I would have a, how many imaginary roots? Two. If it's cor uh, cortic, it could be a higher degree. Let's look right here. One real, real root with what multiplicity? Right here? One, right? But if I look over here where he was looking earlier as, as, a, as a cubic, that multiplicity would be? Remember, if it's an even multiplicity, it touches and bounces off, right? But if it's like this, like a cubic going through, that could be a multiplicity of three. Now, how many roots would you have? Or zeros? Four. 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 Which again supports that it would be quartic or fourth degree. Right? So we can move that x axis around, but regardless, what we want to notice is that end behavior is in the same direction. That's why we didn't need the axes there. Just the fact that the end behavior is in the same direction tells me that it's an even degree. Uh, number five, what other types of polynomial functions can you build with this end behavior? create and then draw examples using the cutouts. Um, just make a note on number five, C number two. Did, didn't we do all of that under number two? Yes. Okay. So we've already done every possible in behavior of a polynomial function. So under number five, just say C number two. Yeah, you never lie to your judge. You know we only have seven minutes left, right? You know, we only have seven minutes, right? Thank you. All right, really quickly, go ahead and mark this out. This first block called me out. Scratch through part B on number six. We're not doing it. The part B there is not talking about an even degree or an odd degree. When they say even or odd like that, they're talking about something called symmetry that was covered in lesson two. We're not talking about symmetry, so don't even worry about B. Okay. So, analyze each polynomial function that you built. So, notice it's saying other types of polynomial functions with this in behavior. So, I'm going to just sketch out a couple. All right? Similar in behavior. Actually, that's exactly what we just looked at. Just kidding. Oh, no, it's not. It's still quartic, but. All right. Two. Um, So how many extrema does each function have? This has... <laughs> the extrema is the turning points or the relative max and min. The extrema is a general term for max or min. Think extreme. What's extreme? Maximum, minimum. Okay? How many extrema does this one have? Five. So, use the axis cutouts to describe the polynomial's number of possible x-intercepts. So, if I look right here, how many x-intercepts does it currently have? Four. Are there any other options for how many x-intercepts it could have? If I move the x-axis, could I put it here? How many x-intercepts would it have now? Zero. Zero. Could I put it right here? Yes. How many does it have now? Two. Now, I could move it just a little bit lower, right? And it would only have two. two. Could I even put it just a little bit lower and put it here? Yes. 
And how many would have now? Just one. So notice, this is an even degree polynomial, right? And it could have uh, 1, 2, 3, or 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 x intercepts. How many zeros is it guaranteed to have? At least four, right? <coughs> when I look over here, right, similar thing, right now it has one, two, three, four, and five. But if I put it here, how many x-intercepts would it have? Six. Six. Could it have five? Could it have four probably? Or three? Or two? Or one? Or zero? Right? Because remember, some of them can be imaginary, some of them can have multiplicities, things like that. No, uh, part D. Now, this is important. Consider the intervals of increase or decrease. How many times does the function change direction? So, right now, what's it starting out doing? Decreasing. After this minimum, it starts to? Decrease. And then after the max, it starts to? And then it starts to? How many um, changes in increase and decrease does it have? Four. Four. Over here. One, two, three, four. Five and six. And I heard someone very quickly say six uh, changes. Who was that? Yeah. Kennedy. How'd you, how'd you come up with that? Added one to what? To the extreme one. Do you think that's a pattern that may hold pretty consistently? Yeah. Yeah. That is one thing I want you to notice. So first off, I will point this out. There's some more patterns we want to notice. If there's three extrema, how many zeros or x-intercepts could it have? Four or less, right? If it has five extrema, it could have six x-intercepts or less. And notice the um, changes in increase and decrease is also starting as one more, right? So. That's because if it has three extrema, what degree could it be? Four or more. more. It could be four or six or eight, but more than likely we would assume that it's four. One more. Notice it has four x-intercepts. If it's uh, five extrema, then we're looking at six x-intercepts. It could be a higher degree, but at least six x-intercepts, and that tells us how many intervals of increase and decrease we would have. Um, and those are the patterns that we want to notice, right? That the number of uh, x-intercepts, the intervals of increase and decrease, is what in respect to the extrema? One more, plus one, right? And notice that's the max. The x-intercepts, you can always have less but the maximum number of x-intercepts is always one more. The number of intervals of increase and decrease will always be one more. We'll wrap this up tomorrow with a couple more details. We'll revote tomorrow. And a closing slide. First off, I feel like there's definitely been some good learning. In fact, better than normal. But what are all of you? Capable of more. You were not clobbering like you should have. Please note, the Mafia assignment is due when? Tomorrow by 7. I might let it be 8. I'll change it till 8. No. You can finish this during enrichment tomorrow. When we finish lesson 3, you have one night to complete the talk to talk on this page, but you can already go ahead and get started on it so you have less to do moving forward. Have a great rest of your day.